What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Today we're going to be going over the basics of the Roblox Studio. Before we get too deep into this video, I just want to let you guys know that I do have a Patreon. And if this video does help you guys out and you want to support me, feel free to go down below in the description and check out the Patreon. Additionally, I also have a Discord as well, which you can join, ask your questions in, get support, help other people, and get help yourself. Finally, if this video does help you guys out, make sure you smash the like button and also hit the subscribe button if you guys want to see some more Roblox development videos. Additionally, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below and let's get into it. So upon launching roblox studio you should see a screen similar to this if not make sure you're under the new tab up at the top left corner of the screen and you should see all of these different projects what these are are they are actually pre-made games which you can take and play and then also start working on yourself now what we're going to do is we're going to take the classic base plate all you have to do is click on it and it should load right up for you okay now you should be seeing something similar to this on your screen if you right click on the screen and look around you'll be able to move your camera additionally you can use a scroll wheel to scroll out scroll in now around the screen you're gonna see a couple of different things let's look up at the top first go over to the view tab now once you're on the view tab you're gonna see a couple of things at the top right here one of the most important things is the Explorer if you don't see this make sure you click on it. as you can see on the right hand corner of my screen something is appearing and disappearing every single time I toggle this on and toggle this off the Explorer is the main component that you're gonna be using while working with Roblox studios and we'll go over that in just a minute additionally you're gonna want to make sure that you have the toolbox checked as well so you can see that on my left hand side of the screen also you're going to want to have the properties tab enabled as well which you can see at the bottom right hand corner of my screen and finally the output you can see that at the very bottom of my screen make sure all of those things are highlighted as you can see they are on my end next let's go ahead and take a look at the right hand side of the screen where it says explore click the little arrow next to workspace and now we're going to be in the workspace which is actually the world so inside of the workspace we have camera terrain and base plate now i had to position my camera a little bit differently so you can see this angle but as you can see this is now highlighted now let's go ahead and click something else now it's not highlighted anymore so when we click on base plate this part actually becomes highlighted and if we click the delete button it actually gets completely deleted now if you're on windows you can click Control z and that will undo what we just did and it'll actually bring the base plate back in front of us okay so now that we have the base plate pulled up let's look at the properties tab right below the explorer tab as you can see at the bottom right hand corner of my screen it says properties and two items we can see a variety of different properties here and also categories like we have appearance we have data we have transform pivot behavior part assembly surface and attributes let's go ahead and take a look at appearance all the way at the top now you can see brick color you probably might already know what this does because it's very self-explanatory but let's go ahead and just kind of play around with this so as you can see we just clicked on the name right there of the color and now we can see this big color wheel and all of the colors changing you can also click the more colors tab and see a whole different thing right here and you can also change the color with a lot of different options what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and set this to very bright yellow maybe even orange then click ok now you can see the brick color which is a property of of the base plate has actually changed also maybe we want to make this a little bit more simpler for ourselves and kind of get a little bit more into it let's rename the base plate by clicking on the name base plate you can also click on the object and then hit f2 and that's also a hot key for renaming this as well now let's just go ahead and rename this to ground so it's as simple as that now we understand that this is our ground right here let's go back to the properties oh make sure you have that selected so you can actually see the properties we have material now we can click this it'll actually open up a drop down menu and we can sort through a variety of different properties now if you're inside of this you can actually just click the up and down arrow to kind of cycle through all of these but as you can see the material of this actually changes and it looks a lot different from each of them so as you can see this looks like sand this looks like plastic legos this looks like slate this looks like a wood floor and there's a lot of other different materials that you can go through as well now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the top of the screen click test and then we're going to click play you can also hit f5 to automatically do this as well but we're just going to go ahead and click on the play manually now as soon as we get into the game we drop down and we're now on our little floor that we have so while you're in the game you can see you can kind of just move around it's like a basic game there's nothing different than an ordinary game you're literally playing the game that you sort of are making right now now what you can do is you can go back over to workspace expand this click on ground once again and now we can see the properties once again now let's look at say transparency for instance we can actually turn the slider up and as you can see the floor is actually disappearing from under me we're not falling at all we're it's we're literally standing on that floor it's no different than when it's at zero the only difference is that it's more see-through and it's more transparent the higher that it goes up so if you don't want it to be see-through at all you obviously set this to zero and if you want it to be completely invisible you set this to one now let's 
go ahead and keep that on zero so we can actually see what we're working with. Now, what I'm actually going to do before we modify that is we're actually going to click stop. And I would not recommend that you edit any of the properties or any of your game while you're playing. I just want to show you guys that as an example so you can kind of see what the transparency feature did and also how to play your game. So now that we're back out of this because we click stop up at the top, we can now start modifying it more. So make sure you're clicked on ground, go over to transform, and now we actually have size. Now we could change this with numbers, like let's say we want to change this to 700, and wow, it just expanded massively. Maybe you don't want to expand it by typing in numbers though, you want to actually be able to pull it apart yourself using your mouse. What you're going to do is go back up to the top and click on model. Now you can see these couple of options at the top, select, move, scale, rotate, and transform. Let's click on move. Now, we see these arrows just popped up. Let's go ahead and click on this and move it over a little bit. Oh wow, our piece is actually moving around. Let's say we wanna move it up a little bit. Okay, we just raised it up a little bit. Also, if you look at the bottom right hand corner of my screen where it says origin position, you can see the numbers changing as I move this around. So as you see, those numbers are all changing, going from negative to positive, depending on where I move this to. We're also able to scale it, which means increase or decrease its size. So remember how we were editing this in the transform property? Well, we can actually just do this with our mouse like I was saying. So you can click on this ball and now we're moving this side over a little bit. But let's say, hmm, we actually want this side to only go this far. Okay, that's not too bad. But what we actually want is we want a really tall block. Okay, there we go. We can expand it. You know what? Never mind. I actually want this to be so small you can't even see it. Look at that. If you get the right angle, you literally can't see it because of how small it is. So yes, that's what transform is. Now we can look at rotate. Okay, we actually want this to sand straight up and down. And look, just like that, we now kind of have a wall. But we also kind of want this to go the other way. So now we have a wall going in that direction. But you know what? Never mind. We don't actually want a wall. We just want a floor. So we'll flip that the other way. Now, we can finally look at transform, which is a little bit more advanced. It's basically a combination of all of the different tools that we have here, such as move, scale, and rotate. You can click this pyramid and it'll actually move up or down. You can click these arrows and you can rotate it. Now, you can actually see the angle at which you're rotating it so now this is 90 degrees and then we can also scale the size of it as well by clicking these white squares and then moving it around and we can see how many studs we're increasing it by that's roblox's unit of measure for size is called studs now what we're going to do is go back to the explore tab and we're actually just going to completely delete this thing you can do that by right clicking and clicking delete or just clicking the delete key on your keyboard now go up to workspace and you're going to see a little plus icon right next to it go ahead and click on plus and then you're just going to click on part now now, when you add the part, you're not going to see anything, although you might. If you can see where my mouse is, it's really hard to see, but the part that we added into the game is actually right there. It's highlighted for us. Now, we can't really see it, so maybe maybe we were actually looking the opposite way and we never would have saw it. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click on the object and then press F, or you can right click on it and click zoom too. And what that will do is it'll place your camera right on the brand new part you added to the game. Remember these tools that I introduced you guys to and we just talked about? Well, we're actually going to go ahead and start using them again. So we're going to scale this out a little bit. We're going to make a little bit of a square and we'll make it a little bit larger. Let's also say that we want to rotate this thing a little bit. So there we go. And now once again, we are going to rename this part to floor. Why don't we give it a little bit of color as well? So we go right here and we're going to make this dark blue. Okay. So what you just did is you completely deleted the original base plate that was here and we just made our own. Pretty cool, right? So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually add in a custom spawn point. So go back over to work space click on the plus and then you can see spawn location right there or you can type in spawn and that's the only object that comes up so you click on that and now this is going to be inserted directly into your game remember how we looked at this before we clicked on it and then we clicked f and now our camera is directly here so let's go ahead and use the move tool we'll move this up a little bit we'll move it over we'll move it over over and down okay now it's directly on top of our floor we can also rename this if we want to as well just name it spawn now as you can see in spawn it actually has a little arrow next to it let's go ahead and expand that and you can see decal and weld looking at decal let's just see what happens if we delete it oh that image is completely gone so yeah that's exactly what this is which we don't really want to have so we're going to go ahead and delete that now of course the spawn is just like the part we were modifying as you can see in the properties it has the brick color so we can change this to whatever color we want let's go ahead and set this to really red now you might be wondering what is weld what does that even mean some of you also might not have weld either so let's go ahead and look at that make sure you have the move tool selected and you have a floor and the spawn part now make sure you're moving the spawn part and move it up and then move it down onto 
into your part so that it's touching. As you can see, once it's touching, both of the parts are highlighted in white. Now go ahead and unclick, and as you can see, it's now weld. Let's go ahead and pick this up again. So when you move it directly above the part a little bit, neither of them are going to be highlighted in white, which means that they're no longer attached. You can also see a little bit of space in between them. Very hard to see, but you can see that. So what weld does is when a part is touching another part, it creates a weld and basically holds those parts together. Weld's not too important, but that's the basic understanding of it. Now let's go ahead, go back to test and click play and see where we spawn at. So we spawn right on top of our spawn. That's awesome. Now let's go ahead and stop this again. And now let's learn a little bit more advanced stuff about properties. So let's go ahead and move our spawn again. Let's say that we actually want to spawn away from the brick a little bit. So as you can see, this is completely floating in the air and let's start our game. So as soon as we get into the game, we spawned in, but as you guys kind of saw, the blue brick just completely fell down. Why did this happen? Well, we're going to go over that now. So click on floor. And then when we go to properties, we're going to click on filter properties, which is a little search bar. And then you're going to search up anchor. Make sure you have the behavior tab open so that you can see this. And then you're going to click on the option anchored and start your game once again. Now, once you start your game, the floor is going to be right here and we can jump on it and there's no issues at all. So this is all because of anchored. What anchored does is it makes your part stay exactly wherever it is when the game starts. So think of it like a boat. If you put down an anchor in your boat, your boat's going to stay exactly where it's at and it's not going to move at all. If you don't have your anchor down, your boat's going to be moving because of the water. So think about it with parts is if it's not anchored, it's going to be moving because of gravity and it's going to completely fall. You might be thinking, well, why didn't the spawn completely fall then? And that's actually because if you search up anchored, this already comes anchored by default. Now let's go ahead and move this. Let's move the spawn point over on top of this and let's raise this really, really high. Okay. So we can see it's very high and let's actually unanchor it and play the game and see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, I spawned in and this sort of fell completely out of the air and dropped right down to here. And that's because it was not anchored. So what it's going to do is it's going to do exactly what gravity tells it to do. And it is going to fall down and it's going to fall right on top of this. So yes, Roblox does have gravity. Now, I think the final thing in this lesson we're going to go over is let's say that we have a spawn point, but we don't actually want to see the spawn point right here. So what we're going to do is make sure you clicked on spawn. You can go to appearance and look at transparency and set that to one now let's go ahead and play the game and now look we don't even see the spawn point at all another thing that i actually forgot to mention is that if you look at the model tab up here you can see a couple of different options these are actually properties of the model that we have selected so we can see material we can see anchor color lock and all these different things let's go over to the properties of our spawn and actually make the transparency zero again so that we can see modifying some of these properties from right here so let's go ahead and we can actually change the material from right here as well so let's say that we want it to look like sand so now it has a sand property and let's say that we want it to be green and there we go so you can also edit some of the properties from up here as well all right this tutorial is getting pretty long so we're going to end it here and we'll pick it up next time make sure you go up to the top left click file and then you can click save to file and you can also save the roblox if you wish to save it to your account as well i'm going to go ahead save it to the file and save it wherever i want to now you can also click save the roblox and it'll show up with all of your different games what you can do is you can click create new game and you can rename it to whatever you want i'm going to say my first game this stuff doesn't exactly matter too much we're just going to kind of actually check these off and say it's only ready for a computer and click create now your game has been published but don't worry it is actually private so nobody else can access it besides you currently and there we go that's it that's all the basics so far if this video did help you guys out please make sure you smash the like button if you have any questions or feedback please leave in the comment section down below so i can improve and help you guys out even more anyway i hope that you guys have a great day and we'll see you guys in the next episode